Fed's goal is to slow inflation, and your tool, raising interest rates, is designed to slow the economy and throw people out of work. So far, you haven't tipped the economy into recession, but you haven't brought inflation entirely under control either. And maybe the reason for that is that other things are also keeping prices high, things you can't fix with high interest rates, things like price gouging and supply chain kinks and a war in Ukraine. But you are determined to continue to raise interest rates, so I want to take a look at where you're headed. In December, the Fed released its projections on the state of the economy under your monetary policy plan. According to the Fed's own report, if you continue raising interest rates as you plan, unemployment will be 4.6% by the end of the year. That, okay, so yeah, inflation is still very high, but I would say that the effects are not immediate. I mean, it does take some time. Uh, that's usually because it's more complex, exactly like she said. Uh, there are a lot of different factors that could play into it. Uh, supply chain disruptions, she mentioned that. This could lead to less goods and services available, which could lead to higher prices for consumers and businesses, which is usually which is usually just temporary because supply chain issues are not like a constant thing. And then we have geopolitical problems and that kind of goes hand in hand with the supply chain disruptions that, you know, we are currently experiencing, experiencing and then price gouging. If you don't know what that means, it's basically when businesses charge extremely high prices for goods and services, uh, especially during times of crisis, like the, you know, crisis like the public health crisis that we recently had about three years ago and this could also be because a lack of supply or just very high demand um i'm pretty sure it's illegal and un unethical but it still does happen so yeah it is what it is i guess but yeah let's get into let's get into the rest of the video more than a full point higher than it is today chair Powell, if you hit your projections do you know how many people who are currently working, going about their lives, will lose their jobs? I don't. Uh, I don't have that number in front of me. I will say it's, it's not. It's, it's not just an a intended math problem. consequence. Well, but, but it is, and it's in your report, and that would be. Wow, yeah, that's funny. She actually called him out. He he said it's not an intended consequence, and she said, but it is sheesh yeah I, i've been saying this for a while honestly if you ask me i think it was an intended consequence um let's not forget man all seven members of the federal reserve board are extremely intelligent people and especially when it comes to economics and finance they all have pretty much master degrees and a lot of experience in the field so when congress decided to pass out stimulus checks and lock us down um this was definitely going to be a consequence that was going to happen and for those that don't know um congress and the feds mr j powell himself they actually worked together you know to promote economic stability and growth uh not layoffs so these rate hikes are not going to do what they're trying to do they're, it's going to completely do the opposite of what they're supposed to do uh so yeah rate hikes could lead to <laughs> negative effects on the economy and less growth so yeah uh i think it was intended and elizabeth warren called him out on it about two million people who would lose their jobs people who are working right now making their mortgages so chair powell if you could speak directly to the two million hard-working people who have decent jobs today who you're planning to get fired over the next year what would you say to them? How would you explain your view that they need to lose their jobs? I would explain to people more broadly that that inflation is extremely high and it's hurting the working people of this country badly. All of them, not just two million of them, but all of them are suffering under high inflation. And we are taking the, the only measures we have to bring inflation down. And putting two million people out of work is just part of the cost and they just have to bear it. Will, they, will, will working people be better off if, if we just walk away from our jobs and, and inflation remains 5-6%? Well, let, let me ask you about what happens if you do this. Since the end of... Ah, sheesh. I mean, 
Okay, I guess to kind of support Jay Powell here, just because you raise interest rates, it doesn't mean it's going to automatically you know, bring inflation down right away. It actually takes some time, uh, usually a year, and it could last you know, a, several years of rate hikes, especially um, when you look at histories. In 1980, it took a couple years of rate hikes before we, before uh, the people in general actually started to see the effects of the hikes. And then in 2004, it took about a year until you actually noticed that the rate hikes were working. So granted, we can be very early still, and we probably still are. But yeah, let's continue. World War II. There have been 12 times in which the happens if you do this. Since the end of World War II, there have been 12 times in which the unemployment rate has increased by one percentage point within one year. Exactly what you're aiming to do right now. How many of those times did the U.S. economy avoid falling into a recession? You know, it's it's not as black and white as it, it's very just very. Just looking at the numbers, it actually yeah, no, is no, pretty black. Alan Ball, <laughs> book on this, uh, oh wow, that we've seen that a is... one point increase in the unemployment in the unemployment rate in a year. You know, it's, it's not as black. And <laughs> wow, dude, Jay Powell, have you lost your voice? Sheesh, this guy can't even come out with the words he wants to say. Let's let's, re, let's replay that. Avoid falling into a recession. Here it goes. You know, it's it's not as black and white as it, it very Just very. Just looking at the numbers, it actually yeah, no, is no, pretty black. Alan Black has written a book on. <laughs> so, there have been twelve times that we've seen a one point increase in the unemployment in the unemployment rate in a year. That's exactly what your Fed report has put out as the projection. And the plan, based on how you're going to keep raising these interest rates, how many times did the economy fail to fall into a recession after doing that, out of 12 times? I think the number is zero. I think the number is zero. That's exactly right. So, then the question... Wow. Damn. 12 out of 12 times. Sheesh, that's wild. Gosh. And you know what they say, history does not lie. 12 out of 12 times led to a recession. Wow. Then the question becomes, we've got 2 million people out of work. Can you stop it at 2 million people? Um, history suggests that the Fed has a terrible track record of containing modest increases in the unemployment rate. Once the economy starts shedding jobs, it's kind of like a runaway train. It is really hard to stop. In fact, in 11 out of the 12 times that the unemployment rate increased by a full percentage point within one year. Unemployment went on to rise another full percentage point on top of that. If that's what happens this time, we'd be looking at at least three and a half million people who would lose their jobs. So, Three and a half million. How many people are employed in the United States? We'd have to get that percentage, but I mean, still... Three and a half million people without work when especially they need that job in order to, you know, pay their mortgage or rent or feed their family. It's uh, it sucks. So, Chair Powell, if you reach your goal and two million people get laid off by the end of this year and then just like in 11 out of 12 times that unemployment has risen by a point in a single year, it keeps on rising. And then we've got two and a half million people out of work. We've got three million people who get laid off. We've got three and a half million people who get laid off. What's your plan? Well, right now the unemployment rate is 3.4%, which is the lowest in 54 years. And we actually don't think that we need to see a sharp or enormous increase in unemployment to get inflation under control. I, I'm looking at your projections. Do you call two, laying off two million people this year not a sharp increase? And I would say four and a half Explain percent. that to the two million families who are going to be out of work. We're not again. We're not targeting any of that. We're, but I would say even four and a half percent unemployment is is well better than than most of the time for the last you know seventy five years. In other words, you don't have a plan to stop a runaway train if it occurs. You know, Chair Powell, you are gambling 
with people's lives. And there's a pile of data. Hey, hey, Elizabeth, let me tell you something. Life is a gamble, which means love is a casino. Showing the price gouging and supply chain kinks and the war in Ukraine are driving up prices. You cling to the idea that there's only one solution, lay off millions of workers. We need a Fed that will fight for families. And if you're not going to lead that charge, we need someone at the Fed who will. Sheesh, yeah, man, I agree. We need a Fed that's going to fight for families. The, their policies only favor the rich. Stand together. All right, guys, I'm checking out. Do me a favor, subscribe, like the video. Interesting debate all around. Uh, I learned something. I'm sure you guys learned something. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.